today's session we'll understand uh, the power of nomination and how uh, it helps all of you in getting the right kind of uh, uh, an advantage by doing a nomination to your investments so that's uh, move forward so as we move forward uh, i'll have a quick poll uh, let's uh, have uh, the, probably you can just put it on the chat box and answer this particular poll the question is have you added nomination to all your investments if you are aware that you have done it to all your investments i'm underlining all your investments you can just mention that you have done that i'll just give two seconds uh, because facebook has a delay okay so i've got uh, some responses here so let's uh, and some of you, it's probably about 50 50% 50% yes and 50% no okay let's understand today why is it very very important to have uh, nominations uh, the first thing that technical definition of nomination is very very simple a person who will receive the benefits in case of the death of the particular person who is insured or a unit holder of an investment uh, so that's where uh, the person who is get going to get the benefit of that a subscriber can choose to nominate uh, anybody uh, for whenever generally whenever people are buying uh, bank fds mutual funds life insurance policy or any other investments today most of the firms most of the documents will ask for this particular uh, nomination uh, straight at the start of joining itself at wealthy you know when you create the profile of the customer we take this detail uh, of course we have one nominee there for practical purposes uh, so this particular nominee's details will be captured while we, you while you are doing any kind of an investments out there generally who is the nominee nominee is usually the spouse children and parents of that particular person who is whoever is taking up the policy now uh, it, is it necessary that it has to be spouse children and parents we will look at it as we move forward from the uh, on this presentation so let's minors individually cannot be nominees so they have to be appointed with a guardian so the guardian has to be there to take care of that particular investments even uh, even the moment the minor becomes a uh, major supposing either when the policy was taken uh, if the nominee was uh, you know 18 year uh, or 17 year old and he turns 18 in the next year then the op op automatically the guardian requirement ceases and he can be independently become the nominee at that point and but till the time he is a minor he or she will be the uh, there's a need for guardian out there now what is the need why why do we really have to have a nomination out there life is really unpredictable and we all know of, know of that we are very well aware of this particular factor so in case of an unfortunate demise of the unit holder or the policy holder this will help the company whoever is holding that particular investment so that the money can be transferred to that particular nominee and it saves complications for your the next kith and kin so that there is no much of fighting happening around over and this, the money is not getting disputed so that's where the nominee necessity becomes a big high okay so next uh, uh, requirement from the nominee perspective who can be a nominee any person technically can be a nominee he need not he or she need not be relatives at all it can be your friend it can be any distant person it could be a uh, sometimes people appoint advocates or their family friends or lawyers as nominees and this can also be non individuals like a trust can also be a nominee in many cases uh, so when uh, but of course in uh, some cases there are exceptions where uh, non relatives cannot be like in the case of pf and uh, insurance non relatives cannot be uh, nominees i'll talk about that little later so where this is how you can have any non-relative also to be uh, can be the nominee and 
that person need not be present at the time of nomination supposing if i am making a mutual fund investment today and i'm go uh, and making the transactions at that point i'm if i have appointed uh, let's say my brother as the nominee he need not be next to me or he need not be there while the nomination is happening but eventually later on i need to inform them that he's he or she is the nominee out there then how many people can be nominees uh, gen most places they accept up to four people as nominees but for insurance it can only be one person for all practical reasons i would always suggest that you choose one person as a nominee rather than having multiple nominees out there so this is how it could be now i have a second question for all of you uh, so does nominee have the full rights over the investment what do you guys think post it on the chat box if i am the nominee for uh, let's say your investments if i am the nominee for your investments will i have the complete rights over all of your investments Okay, I see Pradeep saying yes. Parmesh saying no. Divya no. Okay. Gopal Swami is yes. Then yes, after the demise of the investor, that is Sabita. Okay, so let's uh, anyway. You guys can keep posting the answers. It's generally, uh, I get delayed responses on Facebook. Uh, I will. Dominic is saying no. Yes, let me give you that insight now. Uh, it is no. No is the correct answer there because nominee does not have the full. holding so what happens is nominee is just a custodian for that particular assets technically in general terms in general terms yes nominee enjoys the full benefit of it because if uh, i am uh, the investment guy, guy who i'm investing and if something happens to me and if my wife is the nominee obviously the money will go to her so that's why there is no disputed thing so but technically from the legal perspective nominee is only a custodian he or she will not have full responsibility of it and they'll only be fiduciary responsibility to hand over that to the rightful owner so uh, that's where i said in anybody a friend a relative a, you know an advocate or you know well wisher can be a nominee out there and they will in turn transfer that particular thing to that particular rightful owner so this is why the necessity of the nominees and this is the role of the nominees uh, which is very very important so most times we get confused uh, with nominee having full rights over it why is this convenient is because the for the let's say we we've done a mutual fund investment and something happens to that particular investor and the, when the money goes to the nominee it becomes very convenient for the mutual fund company or the insurance company to transfer to one designated person otherwise it will go into dispute they don't know whom to transfer it to they will wait for uh, you know clarity and then the whole money uh, realization becomes longer so that is the reason we say that you have to To mandatorily nominate someone at least later on, if let's say whoever is the rightful owner can claim it from the nominee at a later point in time, depending if at all somebody else is the rightful owner of it. If it's a family member himself or herself has been nominated out there, then there's no issues, right? So take, uh, from legal perspective, legal standpoint point of view, nominee is not full capacity of usage usage of that particular thing. Next, uh, in case of insurance stocks. which is direct stocks and pf nominee has to be the rightful owner themselves that is basically you cannot have third parties you cannot have friend relatives as a nomination out there uh, if you want that to be done you can put that under will and say that this person is going to take care of all the proceedings post my death but directly in an insurance policy or in a stock or in a pf the nominee has to be the immediate family member only 
Uh, why is this happening? Is because this is uh, a law which was passed uh, just couple of years back, about 2016 odd, where uh, this uh, you know insurance IRDA and various government authorities passed a court order. They said that it has to be only the first immediate family member. Uh, then, in case of joint holding, uh, it, joint holdings will not arise when it comes to uh, insurance, but it will be when it comes to uh, uh, you know mutual funds. There are joint holders. So, if one person among the joint holders, let's say there are two holders, holder A, who is the first holder, and holder B, who is the second holder out there, if he, uh, if person A ceases to be there then it does not go to the nominee yet it will go to the second unit holder or the vice versa if the second unit holder is no more then it goes to the first holder the first unit holder becomes the full holder for that particular investment in a case if both of them cease to be there only then it will go to the nominee so this is when the joint holding uh, will happen so i have another question for all of you uh, this question is there's something called as legal hack if is there a difference between a nominee and a legal heir? Uh, you can respond back with your answers. I see Pradeep saying yes, that's nice. Vivek saying yes, good. Very, very much. Yes, Shivaramji. Okay. So now I see a good amount of awareness coming in on nomination. That's nice. Okay. Parmesh saying yes. Okay. All of you are saying yes. That's right. So now what we have understood is that legal hire can, is the immediate family member. It could be the child of the family, uh, of, of the person who is doing the investment or the person who is wife or whoever is the first immediate family member becomes the legal heir and the nominee can be anyone else now according to the law what is it that is, uh, specify that nominee is only a trustee like already told you and he's only a guardian of assets and the nominee will you hold your assets as a trustee and will be legally bound to transfer all that to the legal heir and later on legal heir is entitled to the entire assets of the deceased so supposing if i have nominated someone else and my legal hire is my uh, so let's say it's a individual and this individual has got uh, uh, you know he's living behind a wife and two children now who becomes the legal hire for that particular case it's not the children immediately it is the first right will be of the wife so wife becomes the legal hire first the entire money will go to the wife now if the wife was not there and the both the children are there and uh, if this person ceases then legal hire will be both the children equally the money will have to be divided equally uh, to both of them now if uh, many a times what happens is if i have nominated one per one child and the other child can the other child claim rights over that particular investments yes the other child can also claim rights to 50 percent of that but that is a legal uh, hassle that they have to go and fight it in the court and get the order and post the court uh, order then the units can whatever investment is there that can be divided when it comes to insurance what happens is the policy is matured and the money is paid back to the the legal hire or the nominee because that's the reason insurance companies insist on having the immediate family member as the nominee uh, if that uh, supposing i'll give you a rare case example supposing a person had taken a term plan and uh, being a term plan uh, holder and his wife was the nominee and unfortunately what happened in this case is his wife uh, uh, and he met with an accident and both of them are no longer there in that case the nominee was the wife so if wife was the nominee who will one second huh?
yeah i'm sorry about that background noise uh, somebody's car got stuck okay uh, so if, uh, if the husband and wife both of them have uh, seized in that particular accident uh, uh, it's not a train somebody's uh, uh, car horn got stuck i guess okay fair enough uh, so uh, where uh, uh, you know there is uh, um, uh, you know if the both husband and wife have uh, seized in that particular case the children uh, though they are not nominees in that particular policy will get the entire rights over that particular investments when it comes to mutual funds what happens is uh, the money does not get automatically redeemed uh, only thing that happens is the unit holding pattern changes the no uh, nominee will become the unit holder after that particular person has ceased so automatically supposing uh, if wife uh, was the nominee the units will get transferred to the wife's name that's how the process happens okay uh, now i've already explained this to you so here like i explained to you insurance companies do not allow non family members to be nominees and it has to be always uh, you know the class 1 hire which is the first immediate person and who should have an insurable interest in that particular person so which is insurable interest basically means that it has to be somebody who would uh, be the direct beneficiary if something happens to me and basically it means that if there is an income loss because of me my family the first family highest member should be known that particular uh, investment okay but how will children know about investment yes uh, gopal ji that's an uh, interestingly good question thank you for asking this uh, i will do a separate session on this uh, the topic will be called as what should your family know uh, i will uh, uh come to this it's a detailed session on itself we'll we'll have a session on that as well okay and one can also choose not to have a nominee also this is also the right of the investor he can say that i don't want to have a nominee there are people who say that you know i don't care i have taken this investments but i want my family members uh, to fight over this i will not have any kind of a nomination so he can sign a declaration saying that i will not have a nominee and let them Uh, choose whatever happens in the court kind of thing so that can also be done okay so now whom should you choose as the nominee uh the choice uh, because here our uh, job becomes very very important it is imperative that we choose the right family member many times uh, there are people let's say there's a family who's got multiple children he's got let's say six children and out of which uh, you know the eldest one probably is not a very very of a sane mind so then what we should recommend is probably it should not directly be the eldest mind or it should not be directly the five people it should be the person it it could be probably the third child or the fourth child who is very well capable of managing finances should be made responsible for that and he can be probably later later on given instruction that the money can be divided to multiple people so sometimes uh, we have seen cases where there are three four children uh, who are there uh, in the family and then uh, only one is educated out of that that could be the last child best thing that can be done is to go and give it to the person who is slightly better educated who has a better way of dealing with paperwork and all of that because the nominee has to complete most of the paperwork later on when the investor is no longer there it could be the insurance holder or it could be the thing so uh, best thing one more thing i'll answer that a little later okay now what is to be done after nomination here gopal ji i am answering some part of that question for you it is very important that we inform that particular nominee is supposing it like i told you in the beginning that nominee need not be present while doing the particular policy if i have nominated my friend as the nominee i go back and inform him that yes i have nominated you as my uh, nominee and why you will be if at all something happens to me you will be responsible you will have to take care of that particular money and hand it over to so and so person so inform that particular nominee that it has to be done about this particular thing along with this also make a will so that will at all point in time will supersede all nominations this is very very important uh, remember this highlight this 
completely any will that is done executed will not a just a you know even a written will is allowed in the court of law but a executed will will always have an upper hand over all nomination in 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 number of nomination that is uh, if an investor is done let's say he's got uh, 40 mutual funds for random sake and uh, he's got about 20 25 policies that he's taken and he's taken 100 or bonds and everything and he's got some 10 12 pmss everything whatever is done and he's got randomly he's nominated everyone across each of it but he has one will which says that this is the person who is going to be the uh, you know owner of that all that entire wealth of mine that i'm passing over then all the nominations wherever whatever is mentioned will all get cancelled and will will supersede everything over above all nominations very important thing and you guys play a very 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 key role out here you it can never be ignored many a times people just we think that is just one column to be filled in and i have to just fill up the nomination and be done with it no we need to make sure we educate the client in the rightful manner tell them who should be the best nominee in all particular cases at all point in time so this is how we should help customers in much more better manner by educating them that what are the shortfalls what are the pitfalls and who should be the right nominations and how the nominations to be done so i would personally suggest never if if it's a possibility not to make minors as nominees Uh, because eventually uh, you know typically what happens is that when they turn majors uh, nobody is aware of that so generally there is a lost case scenarios many a times so better is to make majors as the nominees in most of the investments and eventually uh, you know it can go back to the children and all of that uh, in a much better way okay so that's a uh, thing and can nominations be changed yes it can be changed as many number of times as much as possible you can every place uh, including your bank of days everywhere everywhere you can change it uh, most places it is free of cost nobody charges you anything for that uh, matter neither the insurance companies nor your uh, in a mutual fund companies or anywhere that you have invested your stock see at for stocks it is simple just go to the stock broker and change that for all the stocks holding uh, it can be all the demat account holding rather so it will automatically get changed mutual funds also similarly you can change it and it can be done with a just say plain simple letter but yes can it be done digitally no it cannot be done digitally because this amounts to a legal change legal certification so the signature of the investor is mandated to read there so this it's a customer has to give it in writing that i'm changing this particular nomination to so and so and automatically the nomination can be changed but some banks do charge for it but that's up to the bank depending on bank to bank what charges they uh, levy and all of that it could be a uh, small money also for fds and all of that now when it comes to fds uh, supposing a customer has got uh, five fds in a single bank under the same bank account can i have different different uh, nominees for each of that particular fds that i do supposing uh, let's say uh, you know is a customer who's put 50000 rupees into five fds with one particular same bank same branch can that be with five different nominees yes i can nominate individually for every fd i can nominate differently for that by default what the bank takes is the account nominee even the bank account will have a nominee they'll take that same account holders nominee as the default nominee for all your fds also if you want it to be different while doing the fd you can choose who should be the fd uh, you know beneficiary out there by changing the nomination out there this is how so i have got uh, some important trivias for you uh, before i move to the trivias uh, let me see if there are any questions out there uh, okay there are not much of a question so let's go to the trivia part you if you have any doubts you can keep posting it i'll answer all of that okay uh, so can nomination be done uh, in epf pf uh, so here there's something very interesting supposing i was an employee and i took up this job before i you know got married and after marriage automatically whatever nominations that i had done for my pf and epf will become obsolete supposing i had nominated my father as my uh, nominee for uh, my pf and i got married later on while i was in service automatically my wife will become the nominee out there 
my father will cease to be the nominee so here for pf and epf a marriage so it's a marriage with married women act comes into place where for pf and epf the married women becomes the rightful owner for it okay uh, if the nominee dies before the person who has made the investment so this is also a possibility right so if uh, i have uh, you know i am nominated to someone and this person is a slightly senior citizen and he is no longer there then what happens in that particular case okay the legal has will have to go and get a probation and it i had not managed to ch- i had forgotten to change it that um, you know i forgot that he, he had made this person as the legal heir or as the nominee i'm sorry and uh, he is no longer there then in that particular case the legal heirs will have to establish that the nominee is no longer there he is uh, take the death certificate go to the court get a promotion order and say that yes the nominee is not there now i should be the uh, rightful owner of that particular case okay uh, like i already told you will will supersede all nominations at all point in time which is very now uh, okay excuse me for my spelling mistake there non individuals cannot have nominations while individuals can have non individuals as nominations but non individuals cannot have nominees right so if it's a company if it's a even if it's a uh, you know proprietary company i cannot have a nominee for that particular proprietary company investments so in that particular case the company itself will be the owner if it's a private limited the next owner whoever becomes the next owner to that particular company will become the owners for that particular supposing this was a non individual investment uh, so a non individual investment can also be done for insurance huh? how i'll tell you this when you take up a key man insurance it is not done by the individual it is done by the company in that particular case if that particular person ceases the key man whoever is the main let's say the the policy was taken in the name of the director and the director uh, ceases to be there then the money does cannot go back to the family member of that particular director money will go to the company right same way uh, if the company had investments in mutual funds uh, non individual investments the money cannot go back to anyone else even uh, so it can only go back to the company so there is no nomination for non individuals so that's some important inputs for you okay so let me uh, take up uh, questions whatever that you guys have okay uh, the first question that i see here is from uh, sandeep uh, can we keep two nominees in single term plan no sandeep when it comes to uh, insurance we cannot have uh, two nominees insurance can have only one nominee and that to uh, tier 1a which is basically the first family member has to be the only fam uh, policy or uh, nominee for insurance mutual funds you and fds and everywhere else you can have up to four nominations okay in term insurance if nominee and insured both demise will children get the full claim amount uh, even if uh, insured at age 70 yes gopal ji if uh, this happens in that case again the court probation order is required without the court order the insurance company will not pass on the money to the children the court order is a must and taking this court order is not a very difficult job and that's where you guys come into play there and that's why i kept saying that you know your role is very very important because even if you are not officially nominated as the nominee to that particular investments you are an indirect nominee there because you have been helping that customer in building that particular wealth whether it is a protection need or whether it's an investment need you will act as a fiduciary responsible person to ensure that the money gets liquidated so i have i'll give you uh, uh, you know uh, basic analogy like supposing uh, you know we had sold one term plan to a customer and uh, customer had it and we don't know whether the customer passed on this information to their children or not but we go get to discover that that the fa- that person is no longer there our client is no longer there then we will go to that particular next family member and we say that okay so and so person had taken a policy from me this is the policy number and i will help you get that particular entire proceeds completed and transfer it to you so that's a role of a nominee we are a fiduciary responsibility is also ours there okay so that's important so yeah. 
any other questions well good then if uh, there are no more questions uh, in case you have any questions you can reach on to your partner success team person or reach on to us and we will clarify all your doubts uh, further across uh, thank you very much for joining in for today's master class hope uh, you guys had good amount of uh, knowledge share that uh, you took in uh, thank you very very much for your um, okay will you be explaining will in this presentation uh, no i am not going to present uh, will in this session uh, shrinivas uh, what i will do what we can do is we can have a separate session on will writing we have a third party service for will writing we'll get them to uh, talk to you they are it's a legal firm and it's better that they talk to you on the will writing uh, yes gopal ji if you have a doubt you can post it up not a problem i'm around can an insured change nominee after wife demise to child yes uh, insurance person any per, any any time if at all the this like a normal change of nomination uh, i can change it and there is even if uh, i don't have to showcase that that particular nominee is demised i'm just changing the nominee i just go give a return request that i'm changing the nominee without any explanation i can change the nominee uh can we give a uh, term plan to a sugar person uh, ashutosh uh, it depends uh, on the age and how uh, the high the sugar uh, is basically if typically if he is uh, on insulin and if he has been on insulin uh, injections then most insurance companies deny it because it will result to various other diseases eventually so they don't deny it uh, they don't they deny insurance to such people if uh, you know if he's been having diabetes for a shorter period of time then they give the insurance if he's still on even basic medication like tablets then they give a uh, term plan so it is subject to solicitation uh, we'll have to go and give the application to the insurance company and eventually the insurance company will say yes or no to that particular case so final rights will be with the insurance company and again i have seen cases where company to company it changes some companies will deny but some company will, will say okay i'm willing to take that risk with you and i'll give you the insurance so we'll have to only apply and check whether it works thank you mr joseph thank you vivek thank you gopal ji thank you loknathan okay good night guys let's end the session for today okay can term plan be rejected after demise of for any reason uh, can term plan insurance be rejected after demise uh no if if uh, okay if you are saying that you know can the claim be rejected uh yes there are certain possibilities uh, which could happen like if certain declarations uh, like insurance company will ask for some inputs while uh, uh, taking uh, doing the policy and at that point in time if supposing uh, let's say i had a uh, heart attack and uh, that ailment can result into death and i have not declared that uh, in my while taking the policy in that particular case if my death happened to be uh, a factor of that particular heart attack then insurance companies can deny it but Uh, generally uh, our responsibility is to give, have a full disclosure so we will ensure that the customers all whatever current ailments everything pre existing diseases we normally inform the insurance company while taking the policy
fine anyway we are getting into a different tangent of uh, insurance but doesn't matter uh, we will fine you can reach out to all your partner success team person for any more inputs good night thank you very much for being such a lovely audience uh, smoking and alcohol as a cause uh, yes if we have not declared it and if it uh, resultant of that particular fact it can get claim can get denied done thank you very much guys good night see you around Stay safe, take care of yourself.